two. This is Theodore at Lies of the Devil. Go to liesofthedevil.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Um, we don't have very much in the store, but we do have ads for our other ministries, laymansbookstore.com and stuff like that to the right-hand side. I uh, want to get right into this. I was supposed to make this. I, I, I should have made this video months ago, five, six months ago. Uh, but I kept pushing it off because I didn't want to hurt the body of Christ. But as I kept prolonging, putting this off, putting it, it, it was hurting the body of Christ more so than anything because this person who I'm going to talk about was abusing people and continues to just fool individuals. And I can't sit, I can't sit back and watch it happen anymore. Um, this isn't a, this isn't this isn't slandering the person to try to hurt harm them in any way financially. This is literally to warn other people of their tactics, who they are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'm going to ask God to boldly help me speak and to speak His word thoroughly and not let my own flesh get involved. Um, and I pray that people that watch this understand who I am and they take my words and they let God give them discernment and know that what I'm speaking is the truth. Okay. Um, I want to talk about, actually, let's just open it up with this first. Okay. Before I even get into who I'm going to talk about. Why, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers against and take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Now, this person who I'm going to talk about will use this verse to say that my enemies are taking rage against me. The government, this person now, all the people, the, they're taking rage against me, my own family. This is talking about those who hate Christians and that want to slander Christians. This isn't this isn't talking this verse is not talking about people that are that that love God exposing false prophets. Okay? Don't let yourself get fooled by Bible verses. Don't let somebody take anything out of context just because they can. That's one. Because I'm telling you, after I get done making this video and it uploads, I'm telling you right now, they're going to come after me with guns a-blazing. And here's the thing. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't do it. Because I have nothing to lose. Okay? Because I love God and I have nothing to lose. You have everything to lose. And I will not stop. So you better be a good little dog and go into the corner and pee on yourself. Okay? And I hope you repent after I get done talking about you. Um, whoso findeth a wife, wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Okay. And I want to say, thank you, Lord, for my wife. She's a godly woman. But I also want to say that this person I'm going to talk about found a godly woman. And I know 100% because I was there and they turned their back on him. All right. Um, after saying that, I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to talk about Kent Hoven. Uh, my name is Theodore. I ran a lot of the Free Kent Hovind campaign in the background. And I believed that this person, Kent Hovind, was genuine. I've seen from my own family being in government how there's evil people in government that will turn on individuals. And I literally, I believed that this guy was telling the truth wholeheartedly and when i believed it i prayed to god and god just put it in my my heart to just do everything i could to help this guy and i put four or five months of my life on hold without building my business everything on hold to try to help this individual i spent tireless hours so did a lot of people but i raised i helped form his defense i helped form the defense he used in court that got him out of prison okay um, uh, there's other people that were involved in this. I don't want to get into those in individuals. I don't want to even talk about those individuals. This isn't about them. This is about Kent Hovind and my experience with Kent Hovind and how I'm going to talk about who he is. Um, 
And I could I could write this out in a script. I could write this out in a script, bullet by bullet point, as a timeline, and go through it. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to talk through my with my memory so that you guys know I'm not kidding around. That this really happened. There's no reason for me to remember these things if it was just a lie. Okay. So I'm I. I He's going to come out and he's going to call me a drug addict. I don't know. What, he might call me a drug addict. I don't have no idea. He might call me a drug addict. He'll use Bible verses against me like I'm Judas Iscariot. Well, that's not the case at all. I gave my life, the Free Ken Hoven campaign, I gave a lot of my life to help him get out of prison. I helped form his defense, raised a lot of money for him on top of other people to get him out of prison. And then when, and then, and I actually helped, went to Pensacola, sold everything I had eventually. I'm going to get to this. Eventually, sold everything I had to help and build CSE on lies, okay? So it's my word against his. It's my word, the guy who helped and did everything to help him get back up there, my word against his, okay? I'm just understand that. Um, and in fact, people that are trying to expose Kent, they're more of a Christian than Kent Hoven who says he's a, you know. Um, Lord, help me, because honestly, like, I've gone through times where I was just so angry. I was so angry. And, and, and the people the, the people that most of those people are good people. Most of those people that go there are good people that want to help the Lord, that go to DAL to help the Lord. People that, that like Kent Hovind, they don't know that he's a fraud. They watch him on YouTube, and they think that that's who he really is. They see his DVDs. They think that's who he really is. Anybody that gets to know Kent Hovind, anybody who gets to know Kent Hovind, turns on him, not because they're Judas Iscariots or whatever the case may be, because they know he's a fraud. And I'm going to go piece by piece into this. And I'm telling you right, Kent Hovind, you're a punk, dude. Kent Hovind, you're a punk. You're a punk. You're a spoiled brat who your parents gave everything to you. Okay? You're, you're, they might have taught you all this, others, so but you're a punk, dude. Okay? You're not going to fool me. You're not going to punk me. I know that you thought that I was just some kid or whatever the case being who was lying about what I did with the Free Kent Hoven campaign and, and maybe lied about my history. Or I don't know what you think, dude. You're a narcissist. You're a punk. And here's the thing. I, you are such an evil bastard. You are such an evil person. And I hope that people wake up and they figure out who you are. You, you have no idea how many times I ranted and raved to people who were trying to call me and saying that, oh, you just need to forgive him. You need to forgive him. You know, he's just trying to do the right thing. No, dude, I've been too close to you, bro. I've been too close to you, and I know who you are, and I know who your wife is, and I know what you've done. You've thrown your own family under the bus so that you could come out as a martyr. You're sick. You're a sick individual, and I would say this to your face, but you know what? You're not even, it's not even worth it, dude. This will just, it, you will, you, you would hear what I'm trying to tell you to warn you. All these people around you, your whole entire life, your wife, your, all these people tried to warn you, and you won't, you just like, whatever, to the point where you throw your own family under the bus. Oh, man, you're, you're, you're such a bad person, man. You're such a bad person. I hope people wake up. And the thing is, is you're so charming. You're such a psychopath that people probably won't. They'll still probably look up to you even after this. And I'm going to get flack. I know I'm going to get flack, but whatever. There's too many people out there. They'll come out against you. They know the truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not alone. There's way too many people, and I've met them. You know what I mean? So whatever. Um, I'm going to get the first part in this whole thing. I'm sorry I went off on 10 minutes about, you know, I needed to get that off my chest. This first part is him, basically a clip of a video of him throwing his family under the bus. And here's what he does. He has his little surrogates and he's such a manipulator, man. Somebody will say, maybe, oh, I'm recording this conversation. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Well, can you tell me about your family? And he'll tell you about the family. Be like, hey, listen, uh, uh, you, you, you know, and then they'll say, well, can I, can I expose this to the, to the world? Well, I, I don't necessarily would like you to, but if you want to, you can, you know what I mean? That's how he plays. And so this video clip, this audio I'm about to show you is basically him talking about how his family stole everything. And I'm going to tell you the truth of what really happened. Okay. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, I'm doing fine, yeah. I'm just, I'm hurt, of course, deeply. But she really left me eight years ago, you know. After I'd been in prison about a year, Eric started a new ministry, God Quest, and that he, as he as manager of CSB, for me, claims he sold everything to himself as president of God Quest for $6,300. And that's when he became the provider. 
provider for my wife and everything else, and she pretty much left me. They, they conspired to take away everything she had. Been had. And okay. <laughs> okay, where do I start? Okay. Um, oh, man, I can't even think about you without just, like, wanting to just... And it's not even about gnashing my teeth or anything. But you're just evil, dude. You're so evil. And people watching this, you know deep down inside, people that are at DAL, you know it's a cult. Okay, anyway. So he says that they conspired, his own family conspired against him, and that his wife left him a long time ago while he was in prison. Joe Hoven, I've got to know Eric and Joe for a little bit. I don't know who their hearts are. I don't know. They could be just as, they could, I don't know. Okay, but I'm just going to tell you my personal experience. Kent Hoven literally broke the law. He did. He says he's not a tax protester, but I'm going to show you proof he's a tax protester. And honestly, I feel fruit fooled big time that I didn't dig deeper into the guy's past. I went on. I went. I'm just going to tell you, I, I, I'm i sorry about that. I should have digged into his past. I would have never helped him get out of prison. Never, 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 never. I would have seen right through him. But here's the thing. I'm a good. I, honestly, I try to be a good person. And I got fooled. So I'm going to show you right here that not only did the people that worked at DAL say that Kent Hoven was treating people like employees and he installed a time clock system for people to clock in and out of his ministry, treating him like employees, but that his actual own lawyer talks about how Kent Hoven would brag about how he fooled the system and how he got out of his taxes and stuff like that. Okay. The video featured another evangelist. This is talking about how uh, Pensacola Christian College, uh, which, it's, which is a right wing religious, you know, university. And this is from a this website is from a very secularist type, um, you know, worldview. But that. Um, the video featured another evangelist advocating tax evasion, Horton said. This is her testifying against Kent. The woman told Horton of Hoven's philosophy on paying his employees. She said, you were giving a gift with your work, and they were giving a gift back to you. Basically, instead of money being, you know, instead of exchanging money for a service or whatever the case being, Kent Hoven expected that once you pay in, once he pays you for a service, you have to pay back into the ministry and you guys keep each other afloat by paying each other and keeping money within, you know, this ministry to uh, evade taxes, essentially. And um, evidence included employee applications, vacation schedules, and memos chiding staff for showing up late to work. Now, I've got another article this is the thing pensacola the pensacola news journal they shouldn't be hiding these articles and saying that you have to buy a subscription they shouldn't be doing that and in fact i found a cached version of an article and they deleted the cached version i i did this two months ago and it just happens to be that i saved the text okay and i can't bring i i have it here and i might put it in the details in the description in the video but Essentially, Kent Hovind had Kent Hovind went to court. Ernie Land, okay, the Kent Hovind's guy now or whatever. Um, and honestly, I don't know anything about. I, I I know a little bit about Ernie Land, and he seems like a nice guy. But after meeting Kent Hovind and stuff, I don't know anymore. You know what I mean? But Ernie Land went to bat for Kent Hovind three times prior to Kent's actual conviction, where he had to go to prison on tax evasion and it was all about church ministry yada 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 and the jury never found him guilty but after the three times of him going to uh court to back kent hoven kent hoven got so prideful and so puffed up that he installed an employee an employee time clock system or whatever the case being in his actual ministry so that was the biggest piece of evidence to go after kent hoven for employee taxes evading taxes etc cetera, etc cetera. so Here's what I'm going to tell you. So, boom, boom, boom. Ken Hoven gets off of three different times for tax evasion, whatever the case being, because he's a church ministry. Then, on the then right after the three times he went to trial, he installed a employee time clock system, and it doesn't matter. It does not matter if he was an actual church ministry, whatever the case being. At that point, when he installed it, when he had a time, when he had an employee time clock system put in his ministry, 
everything prior to that, all the times he got off of, you know, when he got a jury acquittal, it doesn't matter. It shows his true intention at that one point and that one juncture in time where he installed, when he treated people like employees. And that's why they got him. So when he says, I'm not a, I'm not a tax employee, I'm not a tax uh, protester, this, that, and the other, the guy's lying to you, okay? And I should have done my research. And I Pensacola News Journal needs to not go into the whole pay, pay money for this article. Release the article for the public because people are getting fooled, okay? And I know that... Anyway, so that's one point. Then his actual attorney, Gibbs, said that he actually, from the horse's mouth, Ken Hovind's mouth, saying that how he fooled the tax system, even when they were like doing jury trial or whatever, when they were going through trial, Ken Hovind would still brag about how they're just mad because I, I got the system, that I, I, I fooled them or whatever the case being. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Ken Hovind is a tax protester, plain and simple, okay? The guy, even to this day, when I was at, ever since I found out he had like millions of dollars in employee back taxes, whatever the case being, I told him, I said, dude, you need to figure out something. I told him and Ernie, I said, dude, you need to figure something out with the IRS. You need to settle. You need to do something. Well, uh, you know, I, you know, something about him getting in a, um, uh, he was retired and he was getting a salary, whatever the case being. And I said, it doesn't matter, dude. Even if CSE is just giving you like $1,500 salary, whatever the case being, Okay, you need to pay a hundred, two hundred dollars, whatever the case being, to the IRS and do that for the rest of your life, okay, or whatever the case being. But you need to figure something out. Now, what are they doing? I have no idea, okay, but I don't know what they're doing. But Kent Hoven is anyway, so just telling you that that's why you won't have major millionaire donors trying to like uh, support DAL because they probably figured out what's going on. Um, now I want to get into Kent Hovind, this whole thing with Alex Jones, that Alex Jones went to court and I'm not even, you know, it's court with the wife and stuff like that. You don't know who, you know, they, his wife, basically their lawyer said that Alex Jones is an actor, that he has an act or whatever the case being. And I'm not even going to get into the whole Alex Jones thing. But my point is, is that these people like Alex Jones, you watch a video and you think that you know somebody, okay? You're watching this video and this is, honestly, I do the best I can to be who I am. I do the best I can to be who I am. And I'm not the most entertaining person. I'm not the most charming person, but this is who I am. I'm a goofy person when I need to be. I'm a, I'm a very like, listen, dude, don't lie to me. You know what I mean? Don't be... and. Alex Jones, like, it's proven that he's an actor. Kent Hovind is an actor. He's perfected his act. Anybody that gets close to him knows he's an actor. He says the same jokes over and over and over and over and over and over again. He won't let you get too close to him. You know what I mean? He, even if you do get too close to him, you find out he's not a good person, and that's when people back off, okay? But I want to get in this article about Alex Jones and how he's an actor, okay? Jones. Diagnosed with Narcissistic Personality Disorder Case Reveals. People with Narcissistic Personality Disorder possess an inflated sense of their own importance and a deep need for admiration and a lack of empathy for others. Man, I know he has a lack of empathy. I know that 100%. But suffer from a fragile self-esteem that's vulnerable to the slightest criticism. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this compilation. But basically, he was like, he, he was in like a... A meeting with his a therapist or whatever the case being he took his shirt off and he just did all kinds of weird stuff but here, here's a compilation video of him and you can see it's all an act and kent hoven when you watch him on video it's an act it's a total just he's a, he's just an act okay deep down inside the the guy's violent in his mind and i'm gonna get into that but on the outset his personality he looks charming and it's he looks funny and all that stuff and he he pretends to be a fourth grader or whatever his line is but he's literally just the most nasty vicious Hardcore pay capitalist, non Christian, you can imagine. Sorry, let this load. Oh, here we go. What do I do, Lord? Destroy the child, corrupt them all. This is their plan, people. These are demons. Just like the Bible says, it's basically an intergalactic invasion into this space through people. I, I'm telling you, it's what all the ancients said. It's what they warned of. It's what we're dealing with. 
Anybody by, that knows the Lord Jesus Christ knows that that's hogwash. They know that it's spiritual warfare, but it's not has nothing to do with intergalactic, you know, aliens and this, that, and the other. Okay, and Alex Kent Hovind and all these people—they look up to this person. They look up to this individual. This is the most fantastical science fiction storyline you can ever imagine. Anyway, this is what he espouses: They're demons. They're freaking interdimensional invaders. Okay, I'll just say it. Make fun of me all you want on CNN or wherever, but everyone already innately knows this: These people are not freaking humans. Okay, Hillary Clinton is a goddamn demon. Forty-two thousand. Sorry for the cussing. Six X for the illegal aliens from south of mexico that bus up on a train every day to understand folks you could wear this i could wear this as a onesie okay i could wear this as a leotard i mean i mean <laughs> oh my god oh my god we're being invaded by south yeah, american so walruses <laughs> the government is shipping in 42,000 people <laughs> that are bigger than job of the hut. <laughs> this country is so screwed up, man. You know, they revel in it. That's how they make, they sell umbrellas in a, in a rainstorm, right? They revel in fooling people and stuff like that. Here, here's another clip. Sorry, it's loading so slow. So slow. Imagine what it's like being under that. I'm a pioneer. I'm an explorer. I'm a human, and I'm coming. I'm animated. I'm alive. My heart's big. It's got hot blood going through it fast. I like to fight too. I like to eat. I like to have children. I'm here. I got a life force. This is a human. This is what we look like. This is what we act like. This is what everybody was like before us. Ah, uh, dang it. Uh, hold on. There this we go. I am. I'm a throwback. I'm here. You know, this is, you know, how many people go, they, they watch Alex Jones and they become like that personality. You know what I mean? And it, yeah, people do, humans get angry and stuff like that. This isn't about Alex Jones. My point is, is that, Alex Jones, these people like Kent Hovind, they believe not in the God necessarily of the Bible. They can say that they do. They can say they believe in Jesus Christ. They don't. They believe in a perverted New Age type God. Okay? Watch the shack. I mean, he endorses the shack all the time. That's what these people believe in. Alex Jones is, you know what? He has a show or whatever. He's an actor. This isn't about him. But I'm, I'm just showing you tidbits. Narcissistic personality disorder. Kent Hovind is the biggest narcissist you will ever meet. He even says that people say, hey, you're too prideful. Stop being so prideful. Stop being a narcissist. And he'll, and he'll even say himself, you know, I, I, the only person I have to answer to is God, not you people. If I want to treat somebody, blah, 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 I have to answer to God. And I'm paraphrasing, okay? Um, anyway, that's just... You know, later on, he talks about going into stars, becoming caveman. He's got like a caveman type thing. They believe he believes in evolution and this, that, and the other. And Mary Toko's in all into it too. I I told Mary Toko many times over. I'm like, you know, these people are New Agers that believe in the New Age Jesus Christ, and she'll just blow it off like it's no big deal. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, I know that people might think that this is nuts or whatever, but I, this is like, this is true, okay? And you don't even Mary Toko. Oh man, you don't even know. Mm. So let's go back into the article. Alex Jones tells court why he can't remember facts about his kids. I ate a big bowl of chili for lunch. You know what I mean? It's they 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 try to detract from reality all the time. Alex Jones said he couldn't recall basic facts about his kids because I had a big bowl of chili for lunch. Anyway, this isn't about Alex Jones, just whatever. Let's just get onto it. But you know, you have all these people that are talking about, you know, Kent Hovind, he's he's lying to people about his case and this, that, and the other. You look at all the different case, all the different articles where people talk about Kent Hovind being illegally imprisoned or this, that, and the other. And again, I was a part of this, okay? That's why I'm coming out. There's the articles are still up. And people that look up Kent Hovind, they see, and I was a big part of this, okay, and that's why I'm coming out. People that they look up Kent Hovind and they see that he was illegally imprisoned or, you know, all this, that, and the other, and that he, he was an attack protester and he gets a cult following. And it's a total lie. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's a total lie. Watch this article. 
One of the biggest articles that come up when Kent, about Kent Hovind being in prison. And again, the whole thing is just bullcrap. I mean, not all of it, I will, but the golden nugget of truth that he had an employee time clock system, that's all missing from this. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? This whole thing is 90% full of truth, like Alex Jones type stuff, and 10% lie. 80% truth, 20% lie. This is an article by an individual who was helping during the free Kent Hovind campaign. And he finally, he came out and I, he came out about Kent Hovind and his marriage to Mary Toko. So there, again, there's other people out there. It's not just me. Okay. Kent Hovind will try to make it out. Like it's just me being crazy or that there's people that hate him. This guy devoted his time. George Luzak devoted his time to help Kent Hovind and Kent Hovind. <sighs> Kent Hovind is spiritually dead. Meet the new Kent Hovind. It's not the new Kent Hovind, okay? And I'm going to talk about his marriage here in a little bit. Kent Hovind at one time preached on the need for believers to repent to turn from their sins and obey God. Sometime during his prison incarcerated period, Hovind must have reasoned with himself, believing that he, play, that he played by all the rules and couldn't understand what he was doing in prison. Upon being released from prison, Kent became the very thing that he rebuked evolutionists for. He became a person who does not believe and need to obey God's laws. Kent Hovind has now become a minister of lawlessness. And that goes back to Joshua Jocelyn and... I'm going to get into that being lawless. Okay. These people just like Paul Young, just like Paul Young in the shack. You know why he likes Paul Young in the shack? Because it's not the God of the Bible. It's a fake God that as long as you love, 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 or whatever the case being, you can get away with doing all kinds of stuff to people. I haven't even told you about my history and what I did with Ken Hovind. I haven't even told you about that. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Kent Hovind is now serving God as a bad example. Amen. You know how many people he's led astray? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to get off of that and we're going to get right into videos. We're going to get right into his videos. I'm going to tell you what he, this guy thinks. I'm going to tell you how he behaves. Here we go. This is his whole video with Mary Toko and about him getting married and meeting a godly woman. And he lies about his wife. He lies about why he was in prison, putting her in prison even. He lies about that whole thing and then he met a new godly wife. Well, you know what, Mary Toko? I'm going to tell you. Okay. Mary Toko. Kent Hovind knew Mary Toko before he went to prison. Okay. People have said that. People have said that they remember him knowing Mary Toko before he went to prison and that he's actually in his, he, Mary Toko's actually in his slideshows. In fact, one of the board directors called me, okay, and told me to go for with Kent Hovind when he went to North Carolina or, or whatever, wherever she lives, to go to the event that he went to where Mary Toko was going to be at so that I could stop him from making a mistake because the pastor that was at that church saw Kent Hovind with Mary Toko before he went to prison. My wife knows that. She was with me when this happened, okay? I was visiting my wife. And I'm going to tell you right now, he knew her before he went to prison. She told us in a meeting when, oh, no, okay. There was meetings where they took me and my wife and they basically, they were doing everything they could to kick us off the property, try to make us look like we were crazy, try to get us to lash out at Kent Hovind through frustration. And Mary Toko admitted that she was talking to Kent while he was in prison to try to get him out of prison. Okay. And then when he got out of prison, Mary Toko, I was there. I, I, every event from Texas, from when he first started speaking again, all the way to his marriage, he was on the phone with Mary Toko while he was married to Joe Hoven on the phone with Mary Toko talking to her. Do you know what I'm saying here? Talking to Mary Toko. And I just, I just remember sitting there in the van as he's talking to Mary Toko, divulging his life experience and getting in these intimate conversations. I'm sitting here going, dude, you're married to Joe Hovind still. This is crazy. And I, honestly, I, there were so many times I wanted to leave. When I first got there, I wanted to leave. And I told Kent Hovind, I was like, dude, you know what? I've got a business. I got this. I want to work for the Lord the whole my life. I want to build a ministry. You know, let's, let's. You know, if, if you want me to help you build your ministry, I can do it like that. And I came to him and I told him multiple times. I said, Kent, 
as I got down there, it was something really strange in the very beginning because I got to see meetings of him and his family and how he treated his family. And I was so confused as to what was going on because I could see I could see one side of his family and their arguments like, Kent Hovind, why? You know, they didn't steal anything from you, dude. You dug your own legal hole. You dug your own hole. You backed yourself in a corner legally by becoming this protester type person. And you've dug yourself a hole. And Eric... Eric did the right thing legally, and he's saying, Dad, preach. I want you to go preach. I want you to go continue doing what you're doing, talking about creation. Stop fighting the government. Stop doing your stuff. Stop being a narcissist. And his wife even was like, listen, Kent, stop doing, stop being a narcissist. Stop being a control freak. I want this marriage to work. I want this marriage to work. And Ken Hovind literally pushed his family away. He pushed them away so he could become a fake martyr. And the whole the whole time he's doing that, he's talking to Mary Toko and, and committing emotional adultery and getting that all set up so that he could marry her and, you know, because his wife abandoned him or whatever the case being. There's so much to this. And again, I didn't write this down. I'm telling you from my memory so that you guys know that I'm real. I'm telling, telling you the truth. And the whole time I kept sitting there going, God, why am I here? This is crazy. There were so many times I wanted to leave. So many times I wanted to leave, but I just, I, every time I prayed, it was like, God, he's going to show me a little bit more. And the reason why I got to know Kent Hovind and all this stuff, so that I can, I can help expose people like this for you guys. Okay. I I've seen it in a very deep and bad way. So anyway, this next clip I'm going to show you is his special announcement or whatever the case being. Okay. That he's going to get married to Mary Toko. And it, honestly, it was just like, I saw them committing emotional adultery before he even got divorced. And then when he gets divorced and he marries her, it's like, wow, this guy is an adulterer. This guy's a hardcore adulterer. He's lawless. Um, I felt like, like the servant in Genesis chapter 24, he said, before I was even done praying, God answered the prayer. And so uh, we flew, uh, I flew to uh, Michigan to meet with, Mary and her mother, who just turned 92 today and had a wonderful time. And we've been corresponding back and forth and writing and visiting. And she came down to Alabama and spent five days and everybody there fell in love with her. And so I'm sitting. During that time when she came down to Alabama for five days, this is when they've got the video of her like actually in the house with Kent Hovind, actually in Joe Hovind's house, Joe Hovind's house doing a vaccine DVD. I was not there to film it because I was like, dude, I'm not partaking in this sin. This is nuts. I can't believe it. So I actually made plans to go take a little vacation because I was working 12, 16 hours a day. Okay. I had no idea who Ken Hovind was. I seriously was working 12, 16 hours a day, building up a ministry because I was promised. I was told, I did not say promise. I was told that we were going to build ministries together. He was going to help me build my ministry. I was going to help him build his ministry. We we're going to build it together and we we're going to just do great. You know what I mean? So I was working my butt off and I remember telling him multiple times, I said, dude, don't pull the rug from underneath me. I felt like something was wrong in my spirit. I said, don't pull the rug from underneath me, Ken. I'm going to build this thing up real quick for you so that we can build more ministries and what my wife are doing now with Layman's Bookstore and Workers in Christ and all that stuff we're trying to do. I That was that was the goal for CSE, to be a launching pad. And he kept saying, no, I'm not going to do this. Oh, I'm not going to do this. I, I, I won't turn my back on you, brother. I won't do what your family did to you by turning your back, turning their back on you. And I'm not even getting into that whole thing, okay? Just, I love my family or whatever, but he, I love my family deeply. But he would just play games. He was a master manipulator. And so they filmed this new Mary Toko vaccine videos while they're at the house. And that's what he's talking about here in March when they first met and how he says, everybody says that we should have gotten married. No, dude. I was one of the first ones that said, if, if Joe Hoven is an unbeliever, then you have biblical reason to get a divorce and get remarried. And I know Joe Hoven's not an unbeliever. Okay. And you had other people that were like, yeah, get married to Joe Hoven or whatever the case being. And you know what? He's using his excuse. So when he says, everybody was telling me how delightful she was, blah, blah, blah. No, dude, that's a lie. That is such a lie. He says this type of thing. I went and talked to, to, to 13 pastors and 12 of them said that it's, I have biblical reason to get married to Mary Hoven, to Mary Toko. Dude, the guy is such a liar. The guy is such a liar. Anyway, listen, he, he inflates numbers. He inflates... He's a psychopath and he's a liar, man. Plain and simple. Our house right now, it is the 20, it is the 4th, and we had decided some time ago, I asked her while she was down in Alabama if she would marry me. I said, I don't want to. Did you hear him say we decided some time ago? 
some time ago. Okay, well, what does that exactly mean? I'll get into that. I want you to answer me. I want you to go home and think about it. And so she went home and thought about it and called me several days later and said, yep, I think this is God's will. I said, okay, then the question is, you know, sooner or later, do you want to, a year from now or when? And we both agreed at our age, we can make a decision quickly and wisely. And we talked, I got a lot of counsel. I counseled 15 men of God that I trust, ages uh, 60 to 85. I said, what do I do? If I get divorced and remarried, does that hurt my ministry? Does that hurt the cause of Christ? What do I do? And uh, almost. It's all about his ministry. It's all about money making. It's all about filthy lucre's sake. Okay, it's all about that. It's all fourteen out of fifteen. I said Brother Hoven, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you did nothing wrong. Just get remarried and go serve God with your life. Okay, all these pastors that he's talking to, he he'll. This is what he did with his own family, and I was there to witness this. Uh, he would he would take he would present an argument saying, "Son, give me my stuff back." And then he would find people that would agree with him and get rid of the people that don't agree with him and then use those numbers against people. This is exactly what he did with the pastors here. Exactly. And there's only three reasons to get remarried. One, if somebody commits adultery, Jehovah did not do that. Two, if the spouse dies, I think Jehovah's still alive. And three, if an unbeliever departs a believer. An unbeliever departs a believer. And he goes out and he lies to people and says that if somebody gets abandoned, liar you know what i mean like it's hard for me not to freak out it's you know people are you waking up are you figuring this out the guy is a hardcore psychopathic liar a false prophet from hell and he's just lying to you all and it's all about money and he's hurting the body of christ and he's hurting ministries all around the world by taking resources and fooling other people you're a punk dude you're such a punk you're such a punk can't I don't, I'm not afraid of you, dude. I'm not afraid of you at all. I had a bad life, okay? You're just a little, you're like a little crumb. You're like a little crumb I washed off my plate, okay? You're, you're, you're a spoiled brat little punk. And I can't believe that you've lied to people this successfully this long. It's a shame. And I was a partaker in that to a degree, and I feel bad about it. What an amazing God you are. Thank you, Lord. Please teach us something tonight and use us. Use us. The only, one of the only ribs that like grows back. Uh, that's yeah. what I've heard from medical people. The only, the only multiply and replenish the earth and earth. And God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. I'm trying to find the spot here where he basically says that Adam, about uh, help me, and how Adam didn't want to marry the animals. Because, you know, he could have married the animals and been with them, but he decided to be with Eve. and st It's just crazy. He didn't take a hand bone. He's not to be your slave. He didn't take a foot good in the creation story. The only thing that was not good was for the man to be alone. So basically, and this is what he believes, people. My wife was there when he said this. He, he, he believes, somebody asked him a question about a bridegroom and like, what does that mean? As if we're bridegrooms, do we, are we all then female? And he said something to the fact of like, well, I never thought about that. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe we have sex with Jesus. I don't know. I'm not joking. It's one of his videos. My wife was here. We both were like looked at each other like, did he just say that? You know, in this video, he literally believes that Adam to have a help meet that after he was naming the animals and they were coming up off, you know, after God was creating the animals that Adam didn't want to be married or have sex with any of the animals, even though he could. He waited, he, he, he just, he didn't want to have any of them. And that his only proper help meet was after when God took a rib from him and created Eve. And that was his help meet. And that is totally insane. So he literally believes Adam could have had an animal to have sex with and have a wife. Bestiality. Do you understand? So he believed, he, he, he made a statement about we might become brides and have sex with Jesus. I'm not joking you. And then he says that, you know, that... <laughs> Oh my gosh, the guy's a the guy's a clown. The guy is a clown. Okay, you're a clown, Kent Hoven. You're a clown, dude. You're a you're a clown. It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Meet means suitable, acceptable, proper, suitable helper. He doesn't need an elephant for a helper. He doesn't need a giraffe. And it's interesting, he took a rib. 
He didn't take a hand bone. She's not to be your slave. He didn't take a foot bone. You're not supposed to walk on her. He didn't take a head bone. She's not supposed to be the boss. And that's exactly what he did to Jehovah. Exactly what he did to her. Isn't that funny? Listen to Steven Anderson. This He tells you the whole entire thing. Uh, I, I don't agree with everything Steven Anderson says. I don't. But when he's right on, he's right on. And he says, basically, he says it exactly 100% that people that are lawless like Kent Hovind, what they do in order to get a divorce, they will push their, their, they will push their wife out of the picture by forcing her to get a divorce. And that's what Joe Hovind had to do because Kent Hovind was wanting, him, wanting hit the family to break the law by giving everything back to Kent Hovind when Kent Hovind dug his own pit when it came, when it came to it legally. So he was asking them to break the law for him. Okay, and he was doing all this weird stuff. I'm not even going to get into it, man. It's just so crazy. Find out from the family. I'm not making this stuff up. And so Joe Hoven had to literally get a divorce from him to protect herself legally because he was trying to get the family to break the law. This Ken, Steven Anderson does a great job, and this is what Ken Hoven did. He pushed her out of the way so that he had an excuse to get married, to, to marry Toko. It's a perversion of what's being taught in scripture. And you know, a perfect example of this, and I'm just gonna call it out by name because it's a common report and because he's rubbing our nose in it, this Kent Hovind garbage. And let me tell you, this guy, look, and I defended Kent Hovind when his wife is divorcing him, but you know what, I'm gonna call him out right now and you say, well, it's not your business. Well because Kent Hoven used the excuse. I was there in the car talking about how Joe Hoven, the only way to get a divorce from her is she's an unbeliever if she committed adultery. And he used that. And I feel bad. Again, I feel bad about this. But I see now God used it so I can expose him at this moment. That's what he probably used Steven Anderson for is to say that she's an unbeliever. And so that's why he probably would support him at that time. But then you get to know Kent Hoven and it's like, dude, you're crazy. You're a liar. That's what Steven Anderson's talking about here. You know what? He goes on YouTube and puts out a video telling everybody, if you don't agree with me committing adultery, then you're a hypocrite and a Pharisee. Well, you know what? I'm a Pharisee then. I'm a Pharisee. Yeah, you know what? Actually, Kent Hovind, in Matthew 19, it was the Pharisees that justified divorce and remarriage. Read the Bible, folks. Matthew chapter 19, the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, you can divorce your wife for any reason you want. That's what the Pharisees believe. That's what rabbinical Judaism teaches. That's what they taught. No, it was Jesus who rebuked the Pharisees and said, no, you, when you get married, it's till death. And what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Amen. Look, if Ken Hovind wants to marry a divorced woman, you know, whatever, that's his business. But for him to get up and tell everybody, oh, I prayed about it, I fasted, and I sought godly counsel, and I told God, I'm willing to do whatever you want, God, and this is what God led me to do, to marry a divorced woman, that's a lie out of the pit of hell. God would never lead you to disobey the Bible. Because he's not listening to the right God. Kent Hovind prays, and he listens to the wrong God. He's an ant. He, he believes in anti. He's an antichrist. Okay, I'm just telling you that right now. He's an antichrist. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now that this this video, this next video, I'm gonna play. It's basically him freaking out. This guy who his his daughter's there at the cult compound. <laughs> it's a cult compound, and I'll get into that. Um, she's there, and he doesn't necessarily want her to be there. And so it's. I'm not sure if it's brilliant or if it's incredibly naive, or he's killing him with kindness. But he keeps talking about how. Uh, missionaries should come here and this, that, and the other. Just watch the video. I'm just going to play you a short bit. But Kent Hovind is freaking out because he knows that that he's a filthy Luke. He's money hungry, and he doesn't like paying. He doesn't like paying people to work. He wants a slave camp, basically, and that uh, it's a cult. And he's freaking out because this guy's exposing him online. It looks like it. I mean, it looks like it. Again, the guy could be totally naive. I'm going to give you the video. Go watch it. It's it's hilarious. Just watch Kent Hovind's face. And, uh, you know, other things like the blessings, the talents, we all know that God says that. We sing about it. We, you know, talk about it. We do Bible study. You have them. They're already there. All you have to do is wake up and smell the roses. Maybe just sit in daddy's lap and listen instead of being so busy. I happen to be the lead scientist on a lot of projects that are, well, even in Star Wars. 
And uh, look at his our face. Children get to see people from Raytheon and mm -hmm. all over, and it's so neat because we live humble, which I just lost the privilege of that. But really, really. Yeah, Kent Hovind does not live humbly. Okay, I'm going to tell you this right now. When my wife was there, <laughs> you guys, you won't believe it, man. I've got the pictures, actually. Um, so we get there, and, you know, first of all, I, I could not, I didn't feel right. I just, it kept, after like four or five months, I just kept getting warning signs from Kent where I was just like, this is not good. And I just kept, I kept getting from the Lord, just be patient. He's showing me more. He's showing me more. He's showing me more. Even though I could have left. Okay. I had a house to go home to. I had my own house. I had my own house at the time. And Kent Hovind, like when you get down there, everybody is living in like bunk beds that like, you know, and they're all using the same toilets. And then Kent Hovind has this house that is like totally decked out with beautiful ceramic tile, beautiful appliances, beautiful everything. And Mary Toko, Mary Toko's um, response to that when we talked about this with Kent in a meeting was that with I had to make a house for my I had to make a house for my husband, and we didn't even use the money from DAL to build it. We used something else. Why don't you even talk about this? And it was like everybody knows you're using CSE money to build a house. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows that you guys are you guys are committing fraud. You know what I mean? Like everybody knows it. And and and, and that's what this guy's talking about, living humbly. You know what I mean? And and uh, anyway, I can't even get into detail. It would take so long. I have to write a book. I have to make a much better, nicer documentary. I'm just going off of you know. And anyway. Um, I don't know what it's like now, but everybody was using the same toilets and it was just, a, it was like a hell hole. It was just like, you know, like people were being treated badly and they're living a luxurious, beautiful life there on their little, you know what I mean? It was just crazy. And so that's what this guy's talking about here. And, um, mm, I can't, I, I want them to make a video about us so that I can like, you know what I mean? So that these th memories will come back and I can just say, Hey, listen, you guys are lying and just expose them. I want you to make videos, Kent. I want you to talk about me. I want you to, you know what I mean? And I, I do it because, dude, you're a fool. You're you're, you're uh, a nasty person, and I want to expose you. And I, I can't sit for three, four hours doing this. I could tell everything. I could tell everything. Well, the meek inherit the earth, so I want to be meek. <laughs> well, that's why yeah. I, wrote my, I wrote the book, The World's Three Most Humble People and How I Trained the Other Two. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, children, this isn't just for your parents. This isn't just for those who can do things that uh, drive a car and stuff. They'll bring you here. All you have to do is say, hey. Uh, Dad. He made a video talking about how he wants parents and he wants churches to pay for people's bills and, and, and pay for their food. And he doesn't want to pay for anything. He doesn't, he wants all the work for free. And so it's just funny. This guy's doing this because it's like, Ken open is like, he's just like having, even, even in the video, like in the video, I know Ken, I I've seen Ken open. I know how he acts. I know his body language and stuff like that because I've been around in, in the video. The guy says something and Ken Hovind's like, you know what I mean? Cause he's mad. He's like super mad that this guy's saying, come over here, see what's going on. See what's happened. You know, come, look in your house, you know, and it's like beautiful or whatever the case may be. And Ken Hovind's just like, <clears throat> I gotta keep it cool. I gotta keep it cool for the, the Christians out there. I gotta, I gotta get their money. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, he's a cartoon character. The guy, he's such a fraud. It's just, it's funny. I don't know. It's just very funny to me. Yeah. Mama, if you pay and you, Show your faith. Do something. And you'll get a shirt. And Look at his face. He, you know, you know, there's, if he has the Holy Spirit in him at all, which I don't know if he does. Honestly, I don't know if he's a Christian. I really don't. Just the way he treated us. He just looks like he's about to crap his pants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, I'll, I'll be honest. This is, okay, I, now I'm getting to the point, like, I got my venting out, you know, and I, I got to call him a fraud and stuff because he is, you know, um, my wife and I, he'll, he'll say that I stole from him. He'll say, this is getting on 50 minutes. I'm going to try to get through his mind. I might have to make a part two, but he'll say that like I was money hungry. He'll say all this stuff to try to make me look bad. I don't even care that I stole from him, whatever. Okay. Um, I worked like 12, 16 hours a day. Okay. I worked hard. I was so exhausted. It's, it was, there's stories. I don't know if this is true. You can ask people, people, there's people that would go to, to the CSE and they would like, there's people that like kill themselves 
I'm not joking you. There was like a story of a person who actually went and committed suicide in the in the ocean at Pensacola or something like that. I don't know if that's 100% ver- I I can't, I don't know that for sure. Ask Ernie Land, maybe he might know more about that. I know he does cuz he's the one that told me a story. And he, people would like work themselves so much. He I thought literally many times over because of Kent Hovind's psychop his sociopathic tendencies and how he would just lie and manipulate people. I thought I was going crazy. Honestly, I worked so hard. I thought I was going crazy. Anyway, um my point is is that uh I would work very hard and it got to the point where DAL was doing so bad they Kent Hovind would just I mean any type of money we saved up in the very beginning of the ministry he would buy them on toys like ATVs he would go buy like an ATV or two brand new ATVs and like everything we stored up in the in the in the bank account that he said that they had it would just be gone like that and he and then he would go back on YouTube saying we're poor yeah because you just spent it on a twelve thousand dollar ATV dude for no reason for no reason you know, that, that's the kind of stuff he does. He doesn't care about the money. He doesn't care what people do. He'll just take the money and he'll blow it on something. He'll just, whatever, doesn't care. And then he'll go back on YouTube saying he's poor or whatever the case being. And so he did, when we got down to CSE DAL, we were only there for two months, my wife and I, because we were like, we got to get, we got to get out of here. That's actually, they kicked us out. Anyway, I got to get into that story. They kicked us out and they didn't know that we were getting ready to leave at the same time. So Kent Hovind said that we left. When in reality, he kicked us out, but we were getting ready to leave at the same time because we just felt from God, like, get out of there. It's wrong. It's a cult. And, and he, so he doesn't think that we know that they kicked us out and then he lied to us, to the board directors. <laughs> I mean, you can't make that. Oh, okay. You're an idiot, Kent. Sorry. Um, so you're an idiot, dude. Oh, I'm just sorry. You're, you're honestly, you're such a moron, Kent. You're such a nasty person and people will figure it out, dude. You're such a fool. Anyway, um, so there was no money in the account, no money for inventory, all the DVDs. I got such a good deal with the provider at Wholesale. I did so good by CSC. This is what makes me mad. I did so good. I know God knows my heart. I love God, and I was there to do the right thing, and I got trampled on, man. So there was no money in the account. Kent Hovind, I, I go, I talked to Kent. I said, listen, I just talked to Ernie. I can't buy the DVDs. There's no money in the account, man. And he goes, and he freaks out. He literally was freaking out. And he goes, well, how about this brother? And cause Kent knows I, I literally just barely sold my house because again, this lie that we were going to build this huge ministry together. I barely just sold my house. He goes, why don't you take over the DVD systems? And I had the money. Okay. Because it was, I'm not even going to get into it with the whole tax thing or whatever the case be, but I sold my house it was tax-free because I lived in it for two years. And anyway, so I took that money and I bought equipment, okay? And I, I, I spent like $12,000, like on twelve, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on brand new equipment, the whole nine yards with, with the company. And I told Kent Hovind, I said, listen, don't screw me, dude. Don't screw me on this DVD deal. I'm going to put a lot of money into this so that we can build this ministry together. Don't screw me. I won't screw you. I won't screw you. So I got all the DVD systems replicated. That's what the ministry is using right now with the comp- through the company. We're using all these DVDs and stuff like that to build this company. Anyway, so we were doing a good job by him, and I was giving him one heck of a deal. Anybody at CSE knows, okay, and I'm not going to name names, knows I gave him one heck of a deal because we we're going to build the ministry together. And he got mad because... I was taking his money, which he thinks I was taking his money. When in fact, we took everything we took in the money wise, we gave it back to the ministry with food. <laughs> you know what I mean? We bought food for the ministry for like three months. We poured in like $5,000 worth of food because food would go like that. And anyway, he got, he, he basically to try to make my wife look bad. My wife and I look bad. He would bring us into meetings and like pound on us. And he was like saying, you need to work for me and only for me. You can't work for your other clients anymore. You just have to work for me. And, you know, I made him believe, like I, I had, you know, I made him believe that I was going to do that. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to, to see what he was going to do. But he literally tried to bankrupt me. He tried to bankrupt me and my wife. You know what I mean, dude? And Kent Hovind, you're a punk, dude. I'm not even mad at you anymore. I I literally look at you like, no, battery's good, baby. I look at you and I go, I go, you know what, dude? God is going to give you what you deserve. You know what I mean? So anyway, Kent Hovind will, I don't even know why I talked about that, but um, 
Anyway, Kent Hovind's a liar. He is going to try to say that I'm greedy. I'm not greedy, okay? I'm not greedy. The guy tried to bankrupt me. He fooled me into getting inventory. I paid all this money to get an inventory. And then as soon as I did that, he tried to get me to leave my clients so that I could build CSE together, you know, uh, and just work for CSE solely, which that's not my company. I don't do that, okay? They're a client. And anyway, when I, when he thought that, when he thought, that he could bankrupt me when he thought I left all my clients and he thought that I had no money in the account or whatever. He pulled the rug from underneath me, kicked me out, and he's telling other people I left when actually he kicked me out. It just happens to be we were getting ready to leave at the same time because we felt from God we shouldn't be there. It was a cult. And I'm not even going to get into the lady we helped. Oh, well, I'll get into that later. Let's just move on. Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy's crazy, people. Okay, here we go. It's all about the money. Listen to him. It's all about the money. People are questioning now if it's people are questioning where he's spending the money. He's like, oh, I've been a Christian for 48 years. You should trust me. No, they shouldn't trust you, man. And I'm going to show them why I'm going to show them that you mingle money from donations that you're raising for a little girl for a cleft palate. You're mingling that in with CSE and then you're conveniently taking the money and spending it on whatever you want. And I don't know this 100 tr percent true. I'm sure that if people dig into the finances, they can figure this out. But, you know, it's it's crazy. It's been rebuilding stuff and pressing bearings on and off and spending another two or three thousand on the bulldozer. But we have projects that just won't quit. Uh, we we really have. Yeah, they won't quit. You know why? You know why his quote unquote projects won't quit because he's constantly wasting money. Okay, the the how the building the um the building the pole barn that he put together. The guy who did construction on it literally showed us that the that quote unquote this this guy Kent Hovind that knows all about construction or whatever, or even people that he puts in positions of authority have no idea what they're doing. Okay, it's just all a big fraud game. They literally took the siding of the house and they they flipped it. So this whole pole barn that they built, instead of the there's the I'm not even I'm not a constructor or whatever. I can't do construction. But there's aluminum side and then there's the foam side, okay? And they took the aluminum side and they put it inside the house, like to to the wrong direction, so that it wouldn't repel water. It would actually suck in water. So the whole pole barn that they put together, I laugh at this because it's crazy. The whole pole barn that they put together is like it's gonna get moldy, like in a couple three years. Like they need to tear it down and redo everything. And they did the same thing with all the little like cabins that they that they sleep in. So when he says like the construction, it never ends. It's because they waste money and they don't care and they buy toys and he buys personal stuff. And it's just like, dude, and <laughs> oh man, I need to write this down. Cause it, it's going to, you know, people are going to be like, is this for real? Yeah, it's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh man. Uh, okay. Let's go back to this video. It just all goes back to money. If you want to help call Ernie, he handles all the money and can give an accounting of anything. So if you want to help donate, you can go to drdino.com, click the donate button, and help us build. I think after 48 years of being a Christian, I've proven I can, I'm trustworthy. You're not trustworthy, Ken Hovind. You're a fraud. It'll go for that. I'm not in this for the money. And neither is Mary. Bullcrap. He's in it for the money. I know it 100%. I know it 100% because my wife and I were there and my wife and I got to see it. And it's not just me. There's lots of other people, Kent Hovind. There's lots of other people that know, okay, that you're in it for the money. It's all about money. It's all about doing not, not doing taxes correctly. It's all about hiding money and doing whatever you can. You're a fraud. You're a huckster, dude. Okay. You're a fraud. You're a huckster. <sighs> I'm going to show you right now this, where is it at? Here we go. This, this little thing right here, as many of you know, we've been raising funds for Lindsay's Cleft Palette. We raised $10,000 to start. You can help by calling us or donating at drdino.com. You know how many people, I don't even, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know this, but I'm sure of it. People go to drdino.com. They'll donate thousands of dollars or whatever. They'll just donate money to Kent Hovind, thinking that they're donating for this woman's cleft palate. They have no idea how to take funds and siphon them off unless, you know, they actually call Ernie or send him an email. But they'll take whatever money that's put in this big pile 
and and Kent will just spend the money and he'll maybe give somebody might donate two thousand dollars and they have no idea that they donate for that little girl. He'll take the two thousand dollars. He'll spend fifteen hundred dollars of it and give five hundred dollars to the girl or whatever the case being. I don't know that one hundred percent, but I have a pretty good idea because of how I know him and how I've seen him work. Okay, I'm not saying that that's what he's doing. I'm just saying from what I've noticed, that's the kind of stuff he does. Okay, and so people obviously are questioning him because that's why he's making this video saying, I've been 48 years. You should trust me. I, I, think, I've, <laughs> I think I've been pretty trustworthy. You know, obviously people are questioning it. They're figuring you out, man. And if you want Mary to come speak on the, at your church or group or any kind of, or on the radio program on vaccines, the dangers of vaccinations, uh, give her a call. Uh, she, Actually, go to my website, childhoodshots.com. Oh, okay. Here's the other thing. Oh, man. There's so much. <sighs> when Kent Hovind was first talking to Mary before they got a divorce, or maybe it was after um, they got married, um, Kent Hovind would talk to me about how the secretary is like, she's acting really strange. It's like she's not happy here at DAL. I think, I mean, I, I think that we should replace her with Mary. Mary Toko is basically going to be his secretary so that he can keep all the money in the family, right? And he basically was going to get rid of the secretary. And I stood up for the secretary 100%. I stood up for her. I was like, no. You know what I mean? You guys are out in the middle of nowhere. She's got no internet. You know what I mean? I'm going to put together the internet for her, which I did. And I'm going to get all this stuff situated and do that. But she's frustrated because she can't do her job. That's why she's... So he uses any excuses he can to pin things up against people so he can make them look bad and get rid of them. And he tried to do that with the secretary so he can put his wife in secretarial position so that they could build this ministry together as their little dynasty, Mary Hoven and him. And so anyway, I stood up for so many people that, you know, Kent would work people to the bone. I re we were in this meeting, we were in a meeting and he goes, he gives me a list and he goes, as a business guy, what would you do with these people in there and the money that they're getting? And I would look at it and then I would see like what the actual ministry made. Uh, well, I don't know what the actual ministry made. I just got an idea from people calling and sales and stuff like that. And it was doing great. And, and then I would, I would see like what people are getting paid. And I was like, there's like these other people that are not getting paid that are working their butts off. And I said, well, I think that you need to either stop construction, rebuild the funds, stop wasting it on money, stop wasting it on toys and stupid things and rebuild the fund and then start construction again. Or you need to start paying these people that are doing construction for you and you know, whatever. And he was like, and he basically said, well, no, they give me free stuff. They pay for the actual wiring and the stuff like that. I can't do that. And I remember looking at my wife like, whoa, this is a totally new side of this guy. So anyway, him and his wife, they're trying to, they're working together. She's basically using him as a catapult for her ministry and they're trying to build this dynasty together and they try to get rid of the secretary so that they could put Mary in that position. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you right now, it's not good. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. I don't even want to play this anymore. People, here we go. This is Kent Hovind on the new age kind of stuff. And Steven Anderson said, he actually, I, I, I'm going to say right now, Steven Anderson, you said stuff about Eric Hovind that was not right. Eric Hovind, his dad used Eric Hovind. And I don't know what you guys did personally or whatever, but his dad, Kent Hovind, basically threw his own son under the bus so that he can come out as a martyr. And there's so much stuff out there that like, I feel bad for Eric. So um, anyway, Kent Hovind did not go crazy while he was in prison. He's always been this way. His family told me specifically, Kent Hovind, they warned me multiple times, Kent Hovind is a liar. Kent Hovind believes that everybody has a devil inside them and that he can manipulate them like they have, like Judas Iscariot said, everybody's a Judas Iscariot and he can use them. And that, um, literally he believes that when Christ comes back, that he, whatever he's done here on earth, that's the kingdom that God's going to give him or something like that. And they warned me that Kent Hovind literally has a demon inside of him. So Kent Hovind, this is how Kent Hovind's always been. It's just, he's gotten worse and worse and worse. So that's the one thing in this video I'm about to show you that's wrong, that he went crazy while he was in prison. No, Kent Hovind's always been this way. He's just gotten worse. Kent Hovind said he read the book nine times. You can't say, oh, he doesn't know. He read it nine times. Yeah. And look, I, I can't even believe the stuff that's been coming out of Ken Hovind's mouth lately. Yeah. And to hear about this book that he's promoting and all the weird stuff he's teaching. And sometimes I'm just shocked and horrified and wondering, like, what in the world is going on with this guy? But then it's, you'll go back and listen to his stuff from before he went into prison. 
and he sounds good. Yeah. So I don't, look, I, I'm not saying that he's not saved because maybe prison just really screwed him up. Yeah, no, no, prison didn't screw him up. It might have, I don't know. I, you know, to a certain degree, maybe he got, he just learned how to be a psychopath better, a liar better. I don't know. But Ken Hovind's always been this way. His family's told me. Um, and, you know, Kent Hovind even, like, I remember my wife just told me right now that she, they were in the kitchen because she used to do a lot of cooking. She would slay for, like, 12 hours. My wife was amazing. And he basically came in the kitchen and somebody said, did you hear about Steven Anderson talking about your marriage? And Kent Hovind was like, yeah, Steven Anderson's an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, so, and Steven Anderson helped get Kent, help raise awareness for Kent while he was in prison. You know, so, anyway, um, Kent Hovind in this whole, I don't even know if I want to get into the rest of it. I think I'm just going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. It's getting late. It's already 1040. I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to say this, Kent Hovind, shut your mouth. Don't ever say anything about me in your videos again. I know that you tried to tell people that I hacked your website or that I stole stuff from you. Bullcrap. I didn't steal anything from you, dude. I never did anything like that. And if you keep saying that stuff, I'll just keep making more videos. I don't care. Okay, I will dedicate a website to you and make sure that everybody knows that you're a fraud. So shut your mouth. Don't say anything. To me. Don't say anything. Leave this video alone. Don't say anything about me. Don't say anything about our ministry. Don't say any. Don't try to lie. Okay, leave it alone. Okay, you already came out and made your first chess move. You think you're a chess master? You're not a chess master, dude. You, you, you might be because you're deceitful and cunning and evil. Okay, and so you might think that learning all this cool stuff to try to screw people over will get you ahead in life. But when people have the Lord Jesus Christ on their side, they don't have to play chess. I don't play chess, dude. I have no patience for it. It just happens to be that all this stuff accumulated and I've got emails, dude. You want to play that game? You want to try to say some bad stuff about me, dude? I'll just leak that stuff out little by little showing who you are. So shut your mouth. Leave this alone. You probably won't leave it alone. You'll probably pretend like it's, you know what I mean? You know what? I probably won't leave it alone. You know what I mean? People need to know about who he is. We'll see. I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this the first part. I might make me videos later. It's just getting late. It's an hour and eight minutes long. And um, God, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for being our King and our Savior. Don't let the Lord Jesus Christ be perverted. God loves judgment. He loves righteousness and he hates liars. Like people like Kent Hovind. And, um, we haven't even got into helping that woman who he kicked out and he called the sheriff's on and we helped her like pack because it was the Christian thing to do. And he used that as an excuse because I was being insubordinate or whatever the case be. <laughs> dude, oh. you're such a bad person, dude. You're such a bad person. Don't, you're going to lie about, you probably lie about me, dude. You know what? Go for it. Go for it. Go ahead and try to lie about me, man. I'll just keep making more videos. You're such a punk, dude. You're such a punk.